Don't you hate it when you sit up until 2 a.m. in the morning drinking wine and researching 3D printers? I think I need to buy a 3D printer. I just don't know which one. Tell me which one, people, everyone. Write it down there. So, big day planned. It's, uh, <clears throat> oh, lights already on. It's gonna be nice to uh, get into my workshop and not have to move shit around and get dirty and just actually come and do some work. Like, feels like the last two weeks have just been treading water, not getting anything done. Left this wall blank here. I'm going to design really nice, um, like a banner, um, just a bit of branding there, just to make it a nicer workplace. Um, I've actually got some of my old um, prototypes and stuff that um, I think will look really nice up on the wall here. So, just something to make the workplace a bit nicer, you know, when you've got staff coming in you know i think it's good to have a little bit of a a place that just feels nice you know this is a showcase So this is my first ever deck that I used to build my first ever electric skateboard. So um, it's, that's not the normal shape. I actually had to cut out big sections to fit the big 83 mil wheels on it. Um, that thing was nuts. Uh, it was a six cell electric skateboard um, running NTM prop drives. 270 kV, so dual drive, um, which actually, there's the drive train that was basically on that. It didn't start out with that one. I had a, a different brand, a different motor mount brand on there, and then I realized, you know, I could do a better job, and I designed my own. This is the first mount that Inertion had, and this is sort of what got me started, got the name out there, got the, the quality out there, um, started offering stuff that no one else had. So um, that really uh, is an important piece. Uh, then uh, not long after that, I started dabbling in my own electronics and trying to come up with a solution so people could mount their electronics on the bottom of the deck in a nice professional way. So this is one of the first sort of, what I thought back then was pretty you know, luxury, pretty nice. Then this was my first ever all-terrain um, attempt. And it was pretty successful. What it taught me was belt drives and rocks are not good. You know, with this kind of setup, the first thing you want to do is hit the gravel, you know. Um, and of course there's dirt, dust, sticks, pebbles, and it just gets caught up in there. So um, I ran with that for a while, but just maintenance was a, a problem. So uh, I ended up sort of discontinuing that line of stuff. Um, these, this board actually was when I realized um, motors from EMP were pretty crap. Um, I thought, yeah, let's get some big motors and build an all-terrain board. But I soon realized just if a motor's big, that's good, but it has to be quality and and they were rubbish like that. Can you hear that? It's completely locked up. Um, this one here is the early Raptor actually. It's one of the first um, times I had the VESC, the space cell, 
the R-Spec motors. Uh, this is the first deck that brought all that together and uh, the, it's an, you can't see it, but it's an Earthwing super glider and you might recognize the shape of it is, uh, it's, it's where I got my inspiration for the Raptor actually. Um, obviously it's not identical in shape, but just the geometry, the, the uh, wheelbase, um, I made my wheelbase a bit longer uh, just because for a high speed uh, that was a bit twitchy um, and I made my curves a bit more aggressive and my shapes a bit more aggressive um, a bit more of a, a square tail sort of a, a bit like an old school styling um, but yeah that was where I got my inspiration from um, it was a sweet sweet deck um, this here is actually a uh, I guess you would say it's an early uh, prototype concept product it was when I was toying with the idea of carbon fiber and I actually I didn't want to spend the several thousand dollars on making molds and stuff so I had the idea of um, making a modular deck out of standard carbon fiber parts and I created an aluminium clamping system and clamped it all together um, unfortunately the supplies that I was using then they stuffed up a few of the parts and I had no money and I was like you know that back then getting all that like one-offs to make this was probably, I don't know, five or six hundred dollars, which was a lot of money. And the first prototype looked awesome. Um, but let me get it off here. It's got a drop down in it. Um, yeah, it's pretty sweet. And yeah, the components just all go in the channel there, which also was. Uh, you know the main structure so and it was yeah super slim and you could modify you could change the thickness of the um plates here if you wanted it to be a bit more flexible you could have longer ones shorter ones um yeah it was really great and it had had the ports in there for running the motor wires yeah it was pretty cool um uh, but unfortunately yeah it just didn't quite pass the uh the practicality test so it's up on the wall um, so yeah it gives you a good idea of a progression of my thoughts and design um, and yeah now we're we're at the Raptor so this is basically what it all eventuated into so um, obviously that that's an all-terrain deck that's that's another story which I'll tell you another day see ya